What's up, fellow entrepreneurs? Today I want to talk about the wonderful work done by the California Chamber of Commerce to prevent legislation it deems job killers. But first, as always, I'm an attorney, but I'm not your attorney, so please seek out competent legal advice for your specific question or concern. All right, let's get into this. The California Chamber of Commerce released its 2022 job killer list last week. This annual list has had a successful record of preventing uh, a large number of legislation, pieces of legislation that is deemed bad uh, for business in California. I know there are several terrible pieces of legislation that get passed every year that hurt small businesses, but without Cal Chamber and its annual list, it likely would be much worse. The small business hero of the day is Cal Chamber President and CEO Jennifer Barrera. In a very poignant and insightful statement about this year's list, she said, California companies are the economic engine that drives innovation and job creation in our state and are responsible for the record revenues the state is currently experiencing. Yet, the bills on this year's job killer list reflect a lack of appreciation of the economic realities and regulatory challenges employers and especially small business employers face as they continue to emerge from, this, from the impact of this pandemic. A shrinking workforce coupled with California's oppressive legal climate penchant for overregulation and continued push for even higher taxes will hamper the ability of California companies to remain competitive in the future. This year's job killer list highlights policies that will hurt job creation and will shut down or reduce investment in our economy. Very well said, Ms. Pereira. Now let's look at the bills that made the prestigious list and what Cal Chamber says about each. First, AB 2095, sponsored by Representative Calra, Democrat from San Jose, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Unfair Denial of State Opportunities. The Chamber says this bill places new, onerous administrative burdens on employers by requiring annual reporting of wage and hour data and employee benefits on an employer's entire United States workforce that will unfairly criticize employers for lawful conduct by punishing the data uh, I'm sorry, by publishing the data on the Labor and Workforce Development Agency website and using such data to rank employers and deny them state opportunities and will subject employees to frivolous litigation and settlement demands. AB 2182, sponsored by Representative Wicks, Democrat Oakland, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Expansion of Duty to Accommodate Employees and Litigation Under FEHA Bill. The Chamber says this bill imposes new burdens on employers to accommodate any employee with family responsibilities, which would essentially include a new, uncapped, protected leave for employees to require request time off and exposes employers to costly litigation under FIHA by asserting that any adverse employment action was in relation to the employee's family responsibilities rather than a violation of employment policies. SB 1044, sponsored by Representative DeRazzo, Democrat, Los Angeles, is a bill the Chamber is calling the State of Emergency Bill. The Chamber says this bill allows employees to leave work or refuse to show up to work if an employee subjectively feels unsafe, regardless of existing health and safety standards or whether the employer has provided health and safety protection and subjects employers to costly PAGA lawsuits if they dispute the employee's decisions or need uh, or need to have another employee take over any job duties. SB 1162, sponsored by Representative Lyman, Democrat Galetta, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Publication of Pay Data. The Chamber says this bill encourages litigation against employers based on the publication of broad, unreliable data by the, collected by the state. It undermines employers' ability to hire, imposes administrative and record-keeping requirements that are impossible to implement, and subjects employers to a private right of action and penalties under PAGA. AB 2289, sponsored by Re Representative Lee, Democrat San Jose, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Wealth Tax Bill. The Chamber says this bill seeks to impose a massive tax increase upon all forms of personal property or wealth, despite California already having the highest income tax in the country. This tax increase will drive high income earners and job creators out of the state, as well as the revenue they contribute to the general fund. AB 1771, sponsored by Representative Ward, Democrat, San Diego, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Targeted Tax on Certain Home Sellers Bill. The Chamber says this bill seeks to impose a tax in addition to the capital gains tax of 25% on the profits from a home resold within three years after it is purchased. 
the tax rate is reduced on a sliding scale for seven years thereafter. This will worsen housing unaffordability and constrain the already limited housing supply. SB 1301, sponsored by Representative Becker, uh, Democrat Menlo Park is a bill the chamber is calling the fossil fuel investment surcharge bill. The chamber says this bill arbitrarily raises taxes on companies that invest in fossil fuel businesses based upon the financing amount. This adds another layer of expenses onto the fossil fuel industry that will significantly increase the cost of doing business, thereby increasing prices paid by consumers for goods and services in California. Woo. All right. AB 1001, sponsored by Representative Garcia and Representative Christina, Democrats Los Angeles, is a bill the chamber is calling a bill that expands CEQA and hurts housing. The chamber says this bill creates new, highly subjective, non-quantifiable, and litigation-based standards in the California Environmental Quality Act will threaten California's economic recovery and ability to construct much needed housing. It also removes local government discretion regarding how to analyze and mitigate proposed project impacts, thereby making projects more expensive, harder to build, and more likely to be thrown into courts by NIMBY opposition. SB 1189, sponsored by Representative Wykowski, Democrat Fremont, is a bill the Chamber is calling the New Private Right of Action for Biometric Information. The Chamber says this bill creates legal liability for businesses large and small, potentially in the millions or tens of millions of dollars, while not providing any exception, such as for the use of biometric data for safety, security, or other reasonable purposes. This bill also imposes new untenable restrictions on the use and disclosure of biometric information in a thinly veiled attempt to undermine the California Privacy Act, uh, Rights Act, Limited Private Right of Action for Data Breaches. SB 213, sponsored by Representative Cortez, Democrat San Jose, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Workers' Compensation Presumption for Hospital Employees. The Chamber says, this bill exam expands the costly presumption of injury. It significantly increases workers' compensation costs for public and private hospitals by presuming certain diseases and injuries are caused by the workplace and establishes an extremely concerning precedent for expanding presumptions into the private sector. All right. AB 2764, sponsored by Representative Nazarian, Democrat Van Nuys, is a bill the Chamber is calling the Livestock Ban. The Chamber says this bill bans new or expanded commercial animal feeding and processing operations for meat, poultry, eggs, and dairy. It will increase food prices for Californians and force food to be imported from out of the state to meet consumer demand. So those are the bills that made this year's job killer list and the reason Cal Chamber gave for adding them to their list. Wow, that was a lot, and I know it was fast, but uh, I hope everybody was able to keep up. Hopefully none of these pass. Until next time, be productive.